All right, I just wanted to give a quick update on the Titan submersible situation, kind of discuss the design of Titan in comparison to the submersible Alvin, which is owned by the U.S. Navy, and also kind of talk about where are we right now because the news has really slowed down over the past week. Nothing has really come out. We're in a holding period, but there are a few things that I wanted to discuss. This first one, 60 Minutes drops a bomb about Titanic submersible trash tragedy in devastating interview. So this interview a few days ago, quote, who was the last person to murder two billionaires and have them pay for the privilege? Uh, you know, that's obviously referen referencing the whole situation with them paying $250,000. This is a quote from Carl Stanley. If you've been following the story, a lot of you probably know who that is. I think Stockton was designing a mousetrap for billionaires. That's what Carl Stanley told 60 Minutes. Stanley is a tourist submarine operator and considered Rush a friend. He was also one of the first people to go out on Titan's test dives in 2019. And he also details what he heard. Quote, I would say every three to four minutes there were loud gunshot-like noises. It's a heck of a sound to hear when you're that far under the ocean and in a craft that has only been down that deep once before. So this was back before they started the Titanic dives. They didn't start those until 2021. This was back in 2019. And he's reporting every three to four minutes there were gunshot-like noises. He warned Stockton Rush... And then he says in response, quote, if someone raised a safety concern, they were not only not listened to, they were silenced. It was a toxic culture when it comes to safety. And I think that whole situation, because if you guys remember when the whole thing started, when it was announced that Titan was missing, they were looking for it. There were some things that came out that Stockton Rush didn't like working with older white dudes and people were like, oh, you know, he, he wants to hire for diversity. When in reality, Stockton Rush didn't like working with older white dudes because older white dudes kept, kept telling him, it's not safe. You need to build a better submersible. You need to invest more money in a hall. You need to make it a sphere. He didn't want to hear any of that. He thought it was a hindrance and that there, it wouldn't be a problem. It was over precaution. Obviously, it turns out that's not true. And those are some remarkable quotes. Ocean Gate used a mothership too small to carry the Titan in 2023, dragging it behind on a platform to save money, according to reports. And yes, the New York Times, I believe that's who it was, did a deep dive comparing Elvin, which is the U.S. Navy submersible, to Titan. Now, Elvin can go much deeper in the ocean than Titan can. It's had major renovations, major upgrades. When you look at the design of Elvin in comparison to Titan, Titan's design mimics a pill. And, and the reason for that is because they wanted to fit more people on Titan because it was an incentive to get as many people on as possible. If you think about the idea, you know, Stockton Rush has to occupy one of the spots. A Titanic expert has to occupy another of the, of the spots. You look at any other submersible in the world that travels that deep, normally they only fit up to three people. So if you're trying to run something to where you're charging people a quarter of a million dollars... It's not very efficient to only have three people on that and you really only have one customer. Maybe if you wanted to take out the Titanic expert and put another customer on, you could have two. But they went with that pill design instead of a sphere. And now it's coming out. Apparently, the Polar Prince was also too small. And the entire, the way they got it into the water was completely different because of its size. Ocean Gate rented an older mothership for its dives in 2023. The Polar Prince was smaller and less expensive than ships it used before. That was according to the New York Times and the Polar Prince didn't have room for the Titan. So the sub had to be towed. According to a report, the submersible that first took humans to the Titanic wreck has made more than 5,000 dives. A researcher who has been on the Alvin 53 times says it's nothing like Titan. Alvin is one of the oldest deep sea submersibles and it's responsible for many scientific discoveries. And listen, this is a tough situation comparing something that the U.S. Navy has to, you know, what, what Titan was and what Stockton Russian Ocean gave 
created. That's kind of like apples to oranges, but it does give you a good perspective just uh, of how different the design of Titan was, and, and it broke a bunch of protocol, and, and there were people that warned Stockton Rush, quote, it would be like comparing a commercial airliner to somebody who just built their own airplane. And yeah, that, that does make sense. The U.S. Navy, you know, with Alvin versus Stockton Rush's Titan. This was an article about a week ago. The Maverick design choices that may have doomed Titan. This references its interior design and it compares it to Alvin basically saying the pill type design here, I'll just read it. Unlike the other submersibles, Titan's hull was shaped like a pill, which fit more passengers. A sphere has been the industry standard, known to be better suited for deep sea pressures. Unlike most other submersibles, the hull's central cylinder used carbon fiber, not the more expensive titanium used in other submersibles that safely return passengers from the abyss. And the Titan's carbon fiber cylinder was attached to titanium hemispheres, creating several joints of dissimilar materials that are challenging to bound properly. So this goes deep into the science behind Titan and possibly why the implosion happened. The main culprits being the pill design as well as very likely I think the investigation comes back and says it was the carbon fiber hull that was the biggest culprit of this terrible disaster. So I just wanted to update everyone on the current Titan situation. I'm not sure what's going to be happening next when it comes to the investigation, but it, apparently it's going to be a while. At least that was the initial thing. They were It was going to be like an 8 to 12 month you know, wait time in terms of the report that gets released on what actually caused this implosion. And then all of the speculation comes out, you know, in the wreckage we saw some different type of electronics being recovered. There were wires. Could that be some type of, you know, black box? Maybe we hear some audio. Maybe we see the transcripts. I'm sure all those transcripts that have been released, let me just reiterate, I'm sure all of those are fake. I mean, I, I guess I don't know 100%, but just based off of every other leak that we've gotten, every leak we've gotten has been fake. So those transcripts, the idea that those originating coming from TikTok, coming from, what was it, Instagram shorts or YouTube shorts, something like that, the idea that those would be real seems ridiculous. Although the transcripts do, I mean, somebody did a good job at faking them. I guess people just fake anything nowadays, and I was also reading the science behind the pill design of the hull compared to the sphere. The pressure applied to a pill shape is distributed disproportionately and may cause collapse similar to a soda can being crushed. So I wonder if that's the idea of how the implosion happened on the Titan with the pressure being disproportionate as opposed to a sphere. A spherical shape allows for a uniform distribution of pressure, making it less susceptible to distortion. And that's why the sphere is a far better design. I would say it's fairly obvious you could make an inference and say the reason the pill design was implemented by Stockton Rush and Ocean Gate, they wanted more customers, right? That that It's just such a, a weird thing. Trips down to the Titanic, $250,000. How does that business model work exactly? You know, how is that really a winning formula? It seems like such a niche audience. I don't know. But either way, guys, that is the update on Titan. You've got Carl Stanley coming out in a 60 Minutes interview saying, listen, I went on this thing in 2019. There were loud gunshot bangs every three to four minutes. And then Carl Stanley says, look, you, you know, this is ridiculous. You need to redesign it or something because it is not safe. And, and Stockton Rush is just not wanting to hear it. Stockton Rush thought any safety concern was, you know, just people being overly cautious. They were stifling innovation. That seems to be his type of train of thought. And I will agree, there are certain situations when you can't be overly cautious. The problem is this is such a delicate thing with pressure because very few submersibles go that deep. If you do design something cheap, 
You know, there's not, it's not like there's a hundred people going down to the Titanic a day. That's not what this is, you know, and I think that's one of the things to where he was trying to compare people being overly safe to like other everyday activities to where we tend to be overly safe. It's just not comparable. You don't have people going down to the Titanic. You don't have submersibles going down to the Titanic every day. It is a very rare occurrence and there's a reason it's a rare occurrence. It's over two miles deep. So guys, that is the update on the Titan submersible situation. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.